Shortly after four o'clock this morning, I spoke to President Zelensky of Ukraine as the first missiles struck his beautiful and innocent country and its brave people, and I assured him of the unwavering support of the United Kingdom. Yeah. Earlier today, President Putin delivered another televised address and offered the absurd pretext that he sought the demilitarization and denazification of Ukraine. In fact, he is hurling the might of his military machine against a free and peaceful neighbour in breach of his own explicit pledge and every principle of civilised behaviour between states, spurning the best efforts of this country and our allies to avoid bloodshed. For this, Putin will stand condemned in the eyes of the world and of history. He will never be able to cleanse the blood of Ukraine from his hands. And although the UK and our allies tried every avenue for diplomacy until the final hour, I am driven to conclude that Putin was always determined to attack his neighbour, no matter what we did. Now we see him for what he is, a blood-stained aggressor who believes in imperial conquest. I am proud that Britain did everything within our power to help Ukraine prepare for this onslaught, and we will do our utmost to offer more help as our brave friends defend their homeland. Now we have a clear mission, diplomatically, politically, economically, and eventually militarily, this hideous and barbarous venture of Vladimir Putin must end in failure. At the G7 meeting this afternoon, we agreed to work in unity to maximise the economic price that Putin will pay for his aggression. And this must include ending Europe's collective dependence on Russian oil and gas yeah. that, that has served to empower Putin for too long. So I, I welcomed again Chancellor Schultz's excellent decision to halt the certification of Nord Stream 2. Mm -hmm. Mr. Speaker, countries that together comprise about half the world economy are now engaged in maximising pressure, economic pressure, on one that makes up a mere 2%. For our part today, the UK is announcing the largest and most severe package of economic sanctions that Russia has ever seen. With new financial measures, we are taking new powers to target Russian finance, in addition to the banks we have already sanctioned this week. Today, in concert with the United States, we are imposing a full asset freeze on VTB. More broadly, these powers will enable us totally to exclude Russian banks from the UK financial system, which is, of course, by far the largest in Europe, stopping them from accessing sterling and clearing payments through the UK. And with around half of Russia's trade currently in US dollars and sterling, I am pleased to tell the House that the United States is taking similar measures. These powers will also enable us to ban Russian state and private companies from raising funds in the UK, banning dealing with their securities and making loans to them. We will limit the amount of money that Russian nationals will be able to deposit in their UK bank accounts, and sanctions will also be applied to Belarus for its role in the assault on Ukraine. Overall, we will we'll be imposing asset freezes on more than 100 new entities and individuals, on top of the hundreds that we have already announced. This includes all the major manufacturers that support Putin's war machine. Furthermore, we are also banning Aeroflot from the UK. Yeah. Next, on top of these financial measures and in full concert with the United States and the EU, we will introduce new trade restrictions and stringent export controls similar to those that they in the US are implementing. We will bring forward new legislation to ban the export of all dual-use items to Russia, including a range of high-end and critical technological equipment and components in sectors including electronics, telecommunications and aerospace. Legislation to implement this will be laid early next week. 
These trade sanctions will constrain Russia's military, industrial and technological capabilities for years to come.